over, in and out. Today, my friends, is what we are calling App Bonanza. This is where we go rapid fire through several apps to just continue to show you and to continue to to really sort of hone in on this idea of these predictable patterns in apps, right? What we have done here is we've picked some apps that we really, really love, and we want to make sure they get some airtime because they are accessible and they're very powerful. But by the same token, they are apps that if you know enough about voiceover, you can probably figure them out. And so these are all native Apple apps. We're not doing third-party apps yet. That will come later on in the course. But for today, we are doing a whole bunch of first-party Apple apps. On Wednesday, we're going to be talking about photos and camera and live text and all of that. So that's not one of the apps we're going to cover today. But don't worry, it will be covered. We're also not covering mail today because that deserves its own uh, airtime on a separate date. So there's a lot of apps that are not in this app bonanza. The apps that are are going to be music, maps, TV, books, and voice memos. Starting with music. Now, I have a subscription to Apple Music, okay? So I want to make that clear from the beginning that your music app may look different than my music app. I highly encourage you to consider Apple Music. You can get it as low as $5 a month if you get the voice-only plan. That has limitations. Um, You don't get spatial audio or lossless audio in that version. And the, within the app, some of the features are limited. But you do get access to the full Apple Music catalog. And I was just about all, to ask you that. Based on the fact that it's only four ninety nine, and others that was paying, what is it, nine ninety nine? you're telling me they're charging us $5 for spatial audio and the lossless quality and all that? So that, that's basically all we're missing out on? Well, there are what, what, what I'm told is that some of the Apple Music app is different. Also, that some of the features that we are used to using directly in the app are not, you know, because the primary means by which you're supposed to interact with it in that, in that lower plan is with Siri. What we're going to do guys, of course, you know, that, that's an obvious reminder that it's very possible to use Siri, uh, to play music. Um, let's, uh, let's go to the music app. We are in the Apple Music app, and here's what I want to show you. Remember, predictable patterns. This app has a tabbed view. Now, who remembers when we did an app with tab view? Well, we had clock. That was one of our first ones. And phone. That was another one, right? You know, favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and voicemail in the phone app. Now, we've dealt with a few apps that don't have a tabbed view. Messages is like a, a list because it's a conversation, uh, you know, view. Uh, then... Notes, you know, again, it's a list and then, a, you know, rich text. So that's not a, a tabbed view. But calendar, uh, calendar sort of has uh, like buttons that are like tabs at the bottom. Uh, reminders doesn't. So you, you get this pattern. So our tabs at the bottom, when you want to explore a new app, it's always a great idea to check the very bottom and see if there are tabs. Across the bottom here in the music app. Tab bar. Listen now. Tab. One of five. Browse. Tab. Radio. Tab. Library. Tab. Selected. Search. Tab. Five of five. And I happened to have been looking for something recently. I don't even remember what now. My search history would show it, but I was in the search tab. The uh, the listen now, and you're going to start to see a pattern with these media consumption apps too in a couple of minutes, because listen now is a tab that combines what I've recently been playing along with recommendations based on what it thinks I would like to listen to. So if I go to listen now, listen now, tab, one of five. now what I'll do, of course, is I'll touch the top left of the screen because that's the next good place to start. And we know that the what we have on listen now, listen now, heading. on the bottom is going to affect what is on the top. So once I've selected that tab on the bottom, now listen now shows up on the top. You have that title. You can see that if you're looking. The rest of us can hear it. My account button. And there's a button there with a picture of your avatar, whatever you've chosen, a photo, an emoji, whatever. And, of course, VoiceOver calls it My Account. And this is how you can get access to your account information if you need it. And uh, lots of settings you can adjust there and subscriptions and all sorts of things. But as we continue to swipe to the right, 
Now, my top picks made for you. Heading, get up, mix, Elvis Presley, Brian Adams, Kelly Clarkson, Lady Gaga, Selena Gomez, The Vamps, Ellie Goulding, who is fancy, Megan Trainer, Katy Perry, Imagine Dragons, Fun Button. Now, there's a lot of artists. Background, Apple Music. There's a lot of artists there. Mix. Um. Some of those artists, you know, which I've listened to, others which I've probably not, or maybe I did and didn't realize it. But these are, you know, it's it's something that Apple Music thinks that I might like. I don't know whether I would or wouldn't, but you could double tap on it. There there are these, you know, curated, hand-picked uh, mixes and playlists. And listen again, heading. Listen again. This is another heading. Ultimate Elvis featuring the Hoppers heading. That's a, so here's a, a, a section of, a gospel group that I listen to. The Hoppers and similar artist station. Button. That's a radio station. Posing for a photo in front of a white background. Apple Music. Chill out. Heading. Okay. Now, you can use heading navigation sometimes in Apple Music because you're hearing that these are all headings. And sometimes that will work. Sometimes it will not because of how long each heading is. And sometimes voiceover can't realize until you move past it that there is another heading but you certainly could try to use heading navigation now how do we use heading navigation we haven't really taught that well headings is one of the things you'll learn about that we will teach you in when we deal with safari but it's just another rotor option you can take it out of the rotor you can have it in the rotor so if i want to try heading navigation i can turn my rotor headings. okay and i can swipe here 70s soft rock essentials a mellow explore image. Now that's a that happens to be an image, so I can't swipe down there to go by headings. But let's go back here. Chill out. New release. Heading. There we go. Made for you. Heading. Featuring Elvis Presley. Recently played. Heading. And here's a section of recently played stuff. I haven't gotten a chance to say this yet because I haven't been in here much because of my schedule. But the bottom line is, and if you don't remember anything else, the mere Matt tell you, the rotor is your friend. Don't be scared of it. That's always where you're going to find things that you may need depending upon the app, whether it's a text field, a mail app, a notes formatting. I think Matt mentioned last week or maybe it was the week before that when you're in a certain app, the rotor changes to accommodate that app that you're in to make sure that you have the settings and don't have to go search and hunt for them. Just like when he was in notes last week and he started turning on a rotor, he learned something new. He learned that the formatting, elements were in the rotor even though he liked using the toolbar because i think it gives you more options but the basic things that you want for formatting a note which is like font and bold and all that was already in the rotor so you don't have to hunt for them so apple is taking a step above and beyond accessibility that they don't have to take that i know other companies don't to make sure that you can accommodate the app that you're in now again you know unfortunately i wish i could spend a long time in this music app because it's so powerful there are as you've seen, curated and recommended playlists. There are 90 million plus songs in here that I can search for, that I can find. You know, my my top favorite kinds of music are, you know, Christian, contemporary Christian, gospel, um, oldies. I like, a, you know, some country, but I, you know, so I, I can search by, by genre. I can even search by lyrics. If I say, well, you know, what's the name? I don't, can't remember the name of that song, but it has the phrase in it, you know, whatever. I can I can search for that. I can search by artist, by album. I can create my own playlists with any songs that I want. Uh, I, can, I can download music for offline listening if I want to. Um, there are just endless possibilities, practically. And so, again, just to give you a quick overview, the Listen Now tab is what you've been listening to, along with, with, along with what the Apple curators think you might want to listen to. And some of it is machine learning, some of it is AI, but some of it is actual real human beings that curate this stuff and then recommend it for us. Um, the next tab... I, I just, I just, oh, go ahead. Just, uh, uh, I'm just asking a question that I already know the answer to, but I know there are some people out there that probably wondering. Why would I pick Apple Music over Spotify? Well, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I I have to I have to uh, I have to choose to respond by the grace of God instead of what I'd rather say in the flesh, honestly. But um, I think that the 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 most appropriate answer to that is the the level of integration 
with Apple Music is just second to none. I have heard people say that the Apple Music app is far more accessible also than Spotify is, but I, I can't confirm or deny that personally but the, the the level of integration if you are an apple user and i want to make it clear because you know there's been a lot of potential antitrust stuff none of it has really materialized praise god but it, you know a lot of a lot of talk about it from people anyone can use spotify you can even delete the apple music app and make spotify your default music app if you want to there is nothing wrong with that and there's nothing in apple's rules that prevent you from doing that but the level of deep integration that you are going to get between apps when you use the apple apps is just superior to anything else the apple music app is consistent with the design of everything else. It's going to work on all of your devices, your Apple TV, your home pods, your Apple Watch with AirPods, everything across the board. And if you do have another smart speaker, like an Amazon Echo, for example, you can add Apple Music as a service, a skill to the Amazon account that you use so that Apple Music can even be played on your uh, Echo Show or your whatever. So there is no benefit to using Spotify over Apple Music. There's no benefit to using anything over Apple Music. And, and you know, from from every experience that I've had, you know, combined with uh, other customer testimonials, I you know, I can say that Apple Music is the best one out there. As I said, 90 million plus songs, you're going to find what you want. And the nice part about it is when you subscribe to Apple Music, you get the iCloud Music Library. Now, the iCloud Music Library allows you to take your own music. Well, first of all, purchase music is always already available on all your devices because you purchased it from Apple. So that's automatic. But with iCloud Music, you can, you can uh, if you, let's say you have uh, music that you imported from a CD or MP3s or something, you can um, have up to 100,000 songs that you bring over from your, you know, computer or whatever. And the first thing Apple will do is they will attempt to match those songs with a high quality version that is the exact same song. And, and with that many songs in their library, you know, in their catalog, it's, it's probably going to happen. And so high quality means... Um, iTunes Plus format, I guess they call it. I don't know if they use that term with Apple Music tracks, but it is still that high, high quality. A lot of the music now is even lossless. I don't know if they'll apply lossless uh, to your, you know, iCloud music. I don't know, but a lot of Apple Music is is lossless now, uh, which really, really sounds incredible in your AirPods and on your Home Pods and things of that nature. If they can't find the match for it. It. You know, maybe it's your your grandson or granddaughter's recital or, you know, something like that, and there is no match in the Apple Music catalog for it. Then they'll actually upload your copy of that track and store it in iCloud. So not only are you getting scan and match, but you're also getting all of your music available on all of your devices without you having to be responsible for storing it, which is super cool because many of us get more music than we would want to store on a single device. And so it's stored in iCloud. It doesn't count against your iCloud storage space. Uh, it's just there. And, you know, if you want or need to download it, you know, if you're not sure that you're going to have good Wi-Fi or cell signal where you're going or something and you really want, you know, X, Y, and Z albums or songs, you can download them uh, for use, in, you know, whenever you want. But, uh, again, but all of your devices have access to that music. So there is another plan which if you don't want to, subscribe to Apple Music. You know, what's really cool with Apple Music, guys, is that you don't have to worry, again, unless it's something that is really not in existence in the cloud anywhere, uh, you're going to find it, you know, which is the great thing. I don't have to worry about where this song is or storing it or anything because Apple Music probably already has it. Um, there was a time when I was concerned about, well, I got to make sure my own copies are you know, because there's another version called iTunes Match. If you don't want to pay for Apple Music, they have just $25 a year. You do iTunes Match, and you don't get all the Apple Music benefits, but you do get the iCloud Music Library. 
And, you know, the question arises, well, do I have the, the correct version? Do I have a backup of it and all this stuff? But look, Apple Music has the songs anyway, so it really doesn't matter anymore, you know. But um, anyhow, so there's a lot of benefits to this. When you're listening to music tracks in Apple Music, they have time-synced lyrics, and VoiceOver will read them, too, if you swipe, you know. And so um, we need to take a, just a little bit more of a look at the music app to understand that, but they will. They actually, you, a lot of songs have... Uh, you know, the lyrics up there and they're in sync. Uh, so if you're watching, you can do, you know, karaoke night with your Apple TV. I mean, it's really cool. So we've talked about the first tab, which is listen now. Browse tab two of five. Browse is basically a way of seeing what's current, what's trending, what's hot, what's recommended, new album releases, new artists up and coming, you know, all that kind of stuff. Radio. Radio has several live stations now. They have Apple Music One, which was used to be called, some of you may know it as Beats One, but it is now called Apple Music One. They also have Apple Music Hits and Apple Music Country. Those are live stations. I, can't, I think those are all the live ones. And you can see the schedules of artists and so forth when you go to that tab. They also offer you a ton of genre radio stations. Um, that you can just listen to anytime you want, you know, anything from, again, your Christian and gospel, your pop, your decades, like, you know, 60s, 70s, whatever, uh, you know, R&B, world, holiday, I mean, just tons and tons of genre stations um, in there that you can listen to, and uh, you can create your own stations based upon artist, song, album, you know, whatever, you can create your own custom stations, and they even have access to... Um, broadcast radio, as they call it, which is your, you know, terrestrial radio stations, um, as long as those radio stations support it, which many do throughout the country, and it uses iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio, I believe, to uh, provide that to you, but you don't even need to have those apps installed. Those radio stations appear right alongside all the other ones here in the radio tab. Again, just remember Try heading navigation, but don't rely on it if it acts like you're at the bottom of the screen and you haven't seen something that you know is there or that you expect to see. Try just swiping right. Try your three-finger scroll because some of this is so lengthy in the music app that um, you know it doesn't always recognize the fact that there's another heading below it because it's not even visible. Um, so play around with that, okay? Uh, here's... Now, that probably is self-explanatory, but, you know, it's all the music you have, whether it's through Apple Music that you've saved, downloaded, purchased, whatever, but all of your music, okay? And you can view playlists, artists, albums, uh, genres, music videos, you know, and you can even customize what's in the library tab because when you choose this, Selected library library heading playlists button artists button. See all those, but look Live edit button. there's an edit button so you can choose what is what shows up here. Playlists, artists, album, songs, made for you, button, music videos, genres, button, compilations, button, composers, button, downloaded, button, recently added, heading. Then you get to music that's recently been added, okay? Then at the bottom tab bar, selected, search, tab. Five five. Search is the last one, and I've already described to you that you can search by all sorts of, you know, different ways, and you can choose to search your own personal library or the Apple Music catalog, okay? So there's two ways to search as an Apple Music subscriber, and you can choose that once you double tap in the edit field to perform your search. You just swipe to the right of the edit field once it's open, and you'll, you'll find... There's so much more we could talk about in this app, all right? You can follow other people. They can follow you. You know, you can share your playlists. I mean, we could, go, we could do a whole class on Apple Music, and I don't want to sell it short, uh, you know, by not mentioning something, but for the sake of time, we got to move on. There's one thing I want to show you though um i'll do an example of a, a search here just so you can see you know where something would actually appear and then search tab search heading artists songs lyrics and more search field so i'll uh double tap to edit do that search field is a search field is editing artists songs lyrics if i swipe to the right dictate dimmed button Cancel button. Of course, dictate is not available because we're on this Zoom call. 
Selected Apple Music button. Your library button. Two of two. That's where I told you you could choose which you're searching, the Apple Music catalog or your personal library. And you even have search results. Recently searched. Things that are recently searched. Clear. Help. These little moments. Excited horns. Instrumental song. Middle dot. Royalty free music make. Okay. So my uh, my son was looking for the song Help, the Beatles song Help yesterday. So he wanted uh, a background track of it, like a karaoke track that he could, s that you know, somebody could sing to, and 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 he wanted the background vocals in it. So I searched for help karaoke version with background vocals, originally performed by the Beatles song Middle Dot Retro Karaoke Generation. I actually didn't type all that in. I just typed, you know, but it, it actually has the result here. So if I want to play that, I just double tap it, and it would start playing. Okay. Now, as I said, I can't show you that. But what I want to explain to you is at the bottom of the screen, and I'll start playing it. I, I'm, I don't even, I don't know that it will even play for me. I'm certain it's not, you guys won't hear it. But, but what it did do is it brought up what I was hoping it would. I, I guess it wasn't, I don't think it was there before. It might have been. At the bottom of the screen, so once you pick a song, you are left in the exact same interface that you were already in. Like, it doesn't take you to a new screen when you start playing a song. The search tab or the radio tab or whatever it is that you had is still showing. But at the bottom of the screen, if you tap on the bottom left where the, the Listen Now tab is... Tab bar. Listen Now tab. One of five. Now, if I swipe to the left... Mini player. Next track. Button. Play. Button. Help. Karaoke version with back now, what I have here is what's called the mini player, and this is a quick way to play and pause and skip to the next track and so forth uh, whenever something's playing while you're still working in the regular part of the music app. Now, if I want to get more controls and more options and lyrics and all these kinds of things, I simply double tap on the name of the song, and it brings up the full screen player or the now playing screen help karaoke version with background help dismiss now playing screen button. see now it that has taken over the entire screen help karaoke version with background vocals retro karaoke generation button and i can double tap on that to get the entire album more button i can double tap on more to get options like add to library add to a playlist share song show album create station Love, but suggest less like this button. Dismiss context menu button. It would even have lyrics there, except this is the background karaoke track, so there are no lyrics. Help. Retro more. Track position. 10 seconds of 2 minutes. 18 seconds. Adjustable. There's my scrub bar. I can just swipe up and down to quickly move through the song. Album artwork. Image. A book cover with text and an image of a building. Retro karaoke. Generation. Help. Karaoke version. Play button. There's play. Next track button. There would be a previous track button also if you had, you know, again, this this is Next track not, button. this is not a full, this example is, is only partial because it's uh, just a background track, right? Normally you're going to have buttons to repeat and shuffle to, to get lyrics, you know, all of those things as well here in this um, now playing screen. And you can show and hide those. Dismiss now playing screen. Dismiss Tab bar, radio, tab. Maybe I can quickly find another song and show you that. Now, first of all, if I double tap on it, it will start playing. I mean, except it won't right now. Uh, and if I long press it... Preview, album artwork, happy holidays, Andy Williams, the Andy Williams Christmas album, removed from playlist, delete from library, download, add to a playlist, play next, play last, share song, view full lyrics. Button. See, that one has view full lyrics. Share lyrics. Button. Share lyrics, I can even do that. Show album. Button. Show the album. Create station. Love. Button. Suggest. Dismiss. All right, so you get the idea. Playlist. You get the idea. As I said, I, I don't, I don't want to sell this short, but we got to move on. Okay, but you get the idea that these songs have, there's a lot that you can do in this app, and I'm showing you you know, the patterns. Again, you always want to look for the tabs, the back button at the upper left. Playlists, back button. Playlists, back button. Christmas faves, button. A library, back button. Library. 
Use the rotor. Just start exploring. And don't forget about your three finger swipe up and down and the vertical scroll bar. You, you heard me use that. Some of you saw me use that a moment ago because I have a long, long list of playlists. Some of them are playlists that I have created, others in my family have created or whatever, and then other playlists came from Apple Music curated playlists. But either way, I have a huge list of playlists. So I used the vertical scroll bar, which is just, you know, a one finger swipe up or down on it. Uh, sighted folks just kind of grab the, the scroll bar and, and, you know, move it up and down. And uh, then, you know, you just swipe to the left and you're taken to that particular part of the screen instead of having to three finger scroll repeatedly. This, this concept, not only are the voiceover patterns predictable, but even the app layouts are predictable. Let's jump into the TV app. One of the cool things you're going to hear happen is as soon as I open the TV app, Do Not Disturb is going to turn on because I have it set that if I'm watching a movie or a show, I, you know, am not interrupted then by certain notifications. That happens in Zoom, too, but Zoom's not in the foreground right now, so. Home, health, wallet, home, health, podcast, TV. Double tap to open. Selected TV, tab bar, walk, do not disturb, on. And do not disturb is now on. Now, the, the TV app is available to all Apple customers. Even if you don't have an Apple TV, I highly recommend getting an Apple TV. I think it's the best way to watch TV. But even if you don't have one, this app is available. Um, I need to explain about Apple TV+. Plus. People think that Apple TV Plus and the TV app are one and the same. They're not. The TV app is much broader than that. Apple TV Plus is simply one of many, many services that you can access within the Apple TV app. But if you do get a new device, you often get a free trial of Apple TV+. Plus. Apple TV Plus is all original content. It's, you know, created by very high-profile creators that Apple has hired and, and so forth and put together. And so it's really, really high-quality content. Now, there's a lot of it that I personally don't watch because much of it has... Um, Either, either themes or often language that I'm not very fond of. But there is some good stuff in it, too. There is some, you know... And, and the, one, the one show that they do have that's not original content is they got the rights to the, the Charlie Brown, the Peanuts series. And so that's fun, and that's really cool. But there's a lot of great shows in there, a lot of shows that have actually won awards already. And um, it's a very reasonably priced service. But I wanted to explain that to you because you're not going to find, you know, Friends or NCIS or something like that on Apple TV+. Plus. It's designed to be primarily all original content. Uh, Peanuts is the only exception that I'm aware of. So this is like all original stuff. If you want, you know, some of those other shows, you have to get a streaming service like HBO Max or Hulu or uh, Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, Peacock, uh, you know, Netflix. There are a lot of great streaming services out there. But you need to just understand that. All right. Now, we're in the Apple TV app. And watch what happens when I tap on the bottom left. Tab bar selected. Watch now. Tab. Originals. Tab. Library. Tab. Search. Tab. Four at four. Hmm. Where have I heard something like this before? I think it was the music app. Didn't the music app have listen now, browse, library, Oh, and it had radio also, library, and search. Well, look here. We don't have listen now because this is TV. We have watch now. So what, what do you think the watch now tab has in it? It has things I've already been watching as well as things that Apple thinks I might like. And by the way, this watch now tab is one of my very, very favorite features of the Apple TV and the Apple TV app. To me, it's one of the biggest defining differences between Apple TV and most, if not all, of its competition. Because I have an entire list here from all my different services of things I have been watching. If I go up to the top of the screen, it's done in headings again. Up next, heading. And the first heading is up next. So I can find out right away what I was watching and resume right where I left off. Here's the first one. Movies, button, TV oh. shows, button. 
sports. Sorry. You can go into movies, TV shows, and sports, and within those, there's different categories as well. You know, kids' shows and um, family favorites and, you know, uh, probably going to be Christmas stuff pretty soon. And in, in TV, they have news, live news. You can jump to live news from a whole bunch of popular, you know, ABC, CBS, Fox News, MSNBC, Bloomberg, uh, you know, CNBC, Cheddar, just a whole bunch of them. And sports, you can pick your favorite sports teams and see real-time sports scores and jump to the live games if you have a subscription to a streaming service that supports it. All right, but anyway, now we're to the section where we're going to see what I've been watching. Reba, continue S1, the 11, 22 minutes, 0% complete button. Actions available. Two people facing each other and standing in front of a white wall. EJ. Now, 22 minutes. that's um, the, the Reba sitcom. You heard it, it wants me to continue season one, episode uh, 11, I think it said. And if I keep swiping. Girl meets farm. Next S4. E10. Hulu. Button. A photo containing an adult and a cake. Hulu. That's a cooking show on Food Network that I was watching using the Hulu app, so I can go into that right away and just start watching it. Everybody loves Raymond. Continue S1, E21, 23 minutes, 0% complete button. Actions available. A photo containing a frame, an adult, a painting, and a brick. Potato. Okay. 23 minutes. So you understand this is all stuff that I have been watching and I can just resume right where I left off. And again, it, I can't stress enough that it encompasses most of the services that I have. There's a couple services that don't share their data with Apple and then those won't be here. But any that do, which is the vast majority of them, you know, then they're going to show up right here. So whether I've been watching something on Hulu, there's like here's... Hotel Transylvania, Transformania, coming soon, button. An illustration of a group of people holding a sign with text. Hotel Transylvania Transformania. That's, um, my daughter added that to our Up Next queue because she wants to see that when it comes out. The Chosen, continue S1, E3, Peacock, button. Okay. A person wearing a white t-shirt and standing in front of a group of trees. Bullet, five periods, P. That's why I wanted to keep going to show you that there are some other, you know, Peacock is what we used for that. We have Disney Plus, Discovery Plus. So whatever streaming service that, you know, they all show up here. Also in this Watch Now tab, you have access to what's known as Apple TV channels. Now, Apple TV Plus is one of them. There are also many others. There are premium services like Showtime, Stars, Cinemax, and uh, even some smaller, well, not smaller, uh, but some ones you might not think of as premiums like Paramount Plus, Tastemade, um, PBS Living, uh, the Hallmark Movies Now, Lifetime Movie Club. Um, there's just tons and tons of them, and those don't even require a third-party app. The, music, the, the media is played, the content is played right in the Apple TV app. You can download it if you want. Um, you, there's no commercials. Your carriers, whenever somebody calls me, some of you saw that we'll, you know, price this out for you if you want to cut the cord, and, you know, TTJ will help you pick the best streaming services and all that. And you know, one of the questions that I ask customers that I think often surprises them is, who is your mobile carrier? Who's your wireless carrier? The reason we ask that question is because all the major carriers are almost always doing a deal. Like T-Mobile, in addition to what he just said, they also give you Netflix. And you can, you can keep that for as long as you have T-Mobile and, and at no charge. And uh, AT&T... Uh, they give you HBO Max, and so as an H as an AT and T customer, I have HBO Max in my plan. Now, not every plan does it. You got to have the right data plan and so forth. But you know, we do, and we get HBO Max. Uh, Verizon. The last I checked, I haven't you know checked in a while, but last I checked, they were giving away the the Disney bundle, which is Hulu and Disney Plus and um, ESPN Plus. And they were also giving six months of Discovery Plus free. So you want to check this out because it's quite possible you might get some streaming uh, for free. And then there are live TV. And, of course, I don't have time to you know go extensive. Cliff and I love talking about Apple TV and cord cutting. You know, we could do an entire session or two on this, and, and we will in our digital cafes. But you know, I just want to say there are live TV subscriptions, right? All right, so I already mentioned Hulu. Hulu has Hulu with live TV, or Hulu plus live TV, they call it. Um, AT&T has direct TV stream, 
which really is its own company, but AT&T has a controlling stake in it. So it's, it's you know, kind of them, uh, but it's direct TV stream. OK, it's the digital um, Internet based streaming version of the satellite service. So all the really good channels, but you're going to pay a lot less and uh, you get cloud DVR, unlimited DVR AT&T gives you or direct TV, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> gives you. Um, I mean, you got to pay ten dollars a month for that upgrade, but still, that's unlimited DVR. And then, so you know, it is possible to use your TV app along with some of these other streaming apps and completely cut the cord. You know, not have to pay for a cable or satellite subscription. You got to pay for internet. You got to get that, of course. Uh, but you know, anyway, um, these Apple TV channels are also things you can subscribe to right in the Apple. TV app. And I'm just going to show you real fast, you know, some of these headings so you get the idea. Here's some other headings. Ted Lasso, streaming apps. Watch all your shows from one place. Heading. So I can see my button. A multicolored logo on a black background. Discovery Plus. By the way, I, I missed some of these. Ted Pop Sports. New shows and move more channels to try. The Shrink Next Door. What to watch. The Shrink My Channels. Heading. Apple TV Plus. Paramount Plus. Showtime. Stars. Epics. Hallmark Movies Now, History Vault, PBS Living, Taste Made. All right, you get that idea. You saw more chat new shows and movies on your channels and apps heading. Here's some. See all. Head of the class, comedy. Isabella Gomez delivers life lessons in a reboot of the hit 80s sitcom. Button. Ted Lasso, The Last O. The other two, Animaniacs. Freed, comedy, see was dance pop revolution, reality, Jojo and her mom are on the hunt for new talent. Now, explore image, the kids tonight show, Ex day of the dead, explore, these all wanna, the gods honest trip, 10 year old Tom, Selena plus, promising young, good grief, love life, create the escape, taste the nation with Padma Lakshmi, documentary. Alright, so you get the idea, and then if we keep going to the next heading, Ghost. which I want to find, Tamper Buzz, at Guilty Park, Baker does it, home sweet home, uh, welcome to, news of, w Finch, survive, w stop, it's what we do, so many choices here, Hitman. Killer. I was trying to avoid having to turn my rotor again just because I didn't want to risk the speaker going off. Susan, Insich, the one shooty I jump. might have to. Dickinson, cut screen language, content, vertical paddings. Okay. Sports. Padding. So here's some sports. See all. Argentine Primera Division. Newells versus Union. Paramount Plus Sports US. Live. Argentine Primera. Brazil Serie A. Argentine NHL. Kings at Maple Leafs. NHL Network HD. 7.30 p.m. Button. NBA. Not set bulls, NBA TV, 8 p.m. Button, NFL, Bears at Steelers, ESPN, 8, 15 p.m. Button, and I would, and yellow sign with text and an image, 8, 15 p.m. I would Steelers. be, first of all, if I've, FBI. if I've chosen that sport and that team as a, a favorite team, that's going to alert me this evening at 8 p.m. that that's coming up. And if the game gets close or gets what they consider to be exciting, it's going to alert me of that too. But I can also put this in up next, long press it, and I can uh, be sure that it'll be there. And I, you know, But I can watch it tonight at 8 p.m. And because I'm subscribed to at least one service that carries that channel, I will be able to watch it. So when you use this TV app, you can see that it covers all these different apps, and the search tab does that too. If I search for a show, it's going to show me every place that has... Well, let, let's just demo that, because I don't want to go through... Again, um, the second tab here was Apple TV+, Plus. that is specific to Apple's streaming service. Library, again, is everything you've purchased or anything you've rented. You can rent movies in here too. You you can buy entire seasons of shows. When you buy a movie, it comes with iTunes extras, which are like the DVD content you used to get, the, you know, the bonus content. All right, so that's library. But the search tab, I'll just do one demo of that. Tab bar, search, tab, selected, search, sci-fi, in drop com, action. Uh, I'm going past the trending. It's actually to the left of the trending content. I Again, I didn't want to touch up too high on my phone because I didn't want the speaker to go off. At Apple Dick Show, search, heading, shows, movies, and more, search field. Search field. It's search field. And we can. We can search for movies and more. Shows, movies, point at start. even cast. We can search for actors and actresses. Uh, let's just say I want to find the show Friends. Cap F. Cap E I. Oops. E R I E M D S. I think I put an M there. D A B. Okay. N 
search and what you'll see. Tab bar. Fret, friend, cast and crew, movies, TV shows, button, top results, button. So I can pick from top results, TV shows, TV shows movies, movies button, cast, and, cast crew, and crew. Friends, TV show, button. First on the list. Actions available. Double tap. Friends. Back button. Now I suggest you use your headings here. Remove from up next button. But share button. Friends. Comedy. March 28th. Resume episode button. S2A19. Middle dot. The one where Eddie won't go. Creeped out by his bizarre new roommate. Chandler demands he move out. Eddie agrees. Ellipsis. But doesn't go. Joey has trouble coming to grips with the death of Dr. Drake Ramore and the accompanying change in his lifestyle. And a new book on employment for women inspires the female friends to have a goddess meeting. So that's a description of the episode that I'm about to play because it's either I've started watching it or it's next up and it says resume. But if I keep going, More I can see every episode from every season. And if I use my headings, related heading, related cast and crew, heading. cast and crew, if I want to find out who's in it, Rachel Green, Jennifer Andy Stan. Monica Geller and Courtney Cox. Okay, but I keep going. How to watch. Heading. This is what I really want you to see. How to watch. So I have choices here. Open an HBO Max app. Seasons 1, 10. Button. Open and direct TV stream app. Seasons 1, 7. Button. By seasons. Seasons 1, 10. Button. Get TBS app. Seasons 4, 7. Button. About. Heading. So there were four different options here. Um, the the best option, well, I actually own this series. It said buy, and the reason for that is, I think, because I bought it in standard definition years ago, not HD, and so it wants me to buy the HD version of it, but um, I actually do own it. If I would tell Siri to play it, it would just play it from my library, but I could also play it from HBO Max. HBO Max has all 10 seasons of Friends. But then you notice that DirecTV Stream apparently right now has, and I would have to look at the punctuation to see for sure, it either has episodes, seasons 1 and 7 or 1 through 7, I'm not sure. And then even the TBS app has it, you know. So what I'm getting at here is when you search for something, it's going to show you all the different ways that you can play it. Friends. And if I, you know, if you weren't subscribed, you know, you could subscribe to it or you could watch it on something that it's that it's currently available. And there may be other ways if I would open, you know, other apps, I'm pretty convinced. But this is these are the ones that are are able to you know, you're able to start it right here from the TV app. And we're going to move on. Um, there's, uh, let's see, I'm going to show you, um, well, I'm not actually, I'm going to tell you the podcasts app is also very similar to this. You have a listen now tab, you have a search tab, you can discuss, you know, again, the same concept and you have not found. A, a mini player there we go. Music, widget, stack, Matthew Volbrex station, do not disturb, off. Okay, so you have a, a, you know, a, a mini player for your podcast, so that's another app that's very, very similar to that. So our next app, um, very quickly, and I can't do it too quickly because I actually have to show you how to use it then, but I do want to show you the Apple Books app, and at first glance, it's going to appear just like music and TV and podcasts because again you're going to have the same type of tabbed interface with very very similar tabs but as they relate to books tv podcasts hell apps books double tap to open once again i have do not disturb set to come on when i open this app books reading now do not disturb on so here's our tabs at the bottom Tab bar selected. Reading now. Tab one of five. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? Reading now. Listen now. Watch now. All right. Library tab two of five. I know we've heard that before. Bookstore tab three of five. Audiobooks tab four of five. Those really are both store tabs. It just kind of narrows you down by books and audiobooks. Search tab. And a search tab that covers all of the above. Your library, the bookstore, and the audiobook section. So you have lots of choices here. Your library tab, again, is everything you've bought, every book you've imported or bought. Um, 
and and reading now is stuff you're currently reading here again reading now heading today's reading five minutes left button that's your reading goal it'll let you know when you've reached that you can adjust that or turn it off current and recent current heading and by the way there should have been yeah there should have been a speaker hold on guys Speaker off. Okay. Do not disturb books. Reading now. Do not read it. Today's reading. Fuck current and t now. Read it to the current and recent current heading. Cover of iPad user guide by Apple Incorporated button. So this is just a list of the things that I have been reading. Of course, with all the updates, I you know I always have the uh, user guides front and center. Here's uh, probably I have my iPad user guide. Twenty four percent. More actions button. And more actions are going to let us view the book in the store. They're going to see, uh, they're going to let us share the book. You know, there are different options that we have if we go to more here. More actions button. Um, recent heading. Here's some other recent books. New Dracula Rises Again by Carson and Matthew. Apple TV a user guide. Apple TV a user guide. HomePod user guide. By Titanic. The most complete story ever told. Anniversary edition by Matthew Volbrecht. All right. 42% completed. I'll Button. use, I can use that. Actions available. That's uh, a book that I wrote about the Titanic, which is available in the Apple bookstore. So I can use that to show you how to read something because it's not, you know, copyrighted or anything. Well, I mean, it is, but I'm the author, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let's double tap on it and you'll see that it will open. Titanic books. Books, library, button. And I should have started our screen share. I forgot about that because some people were Do using that. So. 79 participants. Do more. Share content. But screen. Microphone on. Everything on your. Do not screen broadcast. Select Michelle Kurt. Start broadcast button. Three. Stop. Two. One. Okay. You are sharing screen. Zoom input URL here. Tech do not disturb. On. Speaker on. But more. Button. Unread mess. Nine five. On the floating pad. Do not. Dot yep. Whoops. Home. There we were. Podcast TV. Apps. Books. Double. Okay. Library. But so. Do not dis just to show you, if you're looking at the screen. Library. Button. This was the main screen. Now, heading. Just like with. Tab bar selected. Reading now. Library. Bookstore. Audio. Search. See, just like with other apps, and then up here. Reading now. Today's reading. Five minutes. Current and recent. Cover of iPad. U iPad twenty. More app. Recent. New. Dracula. Apple TV. Use Apple. Home pod user guide. Titanic. The most complete story ever told. I double tap that. Books. And it takes me Books, library, button. to where I left off in the book. I don't even have to bookmark it. I can, but I don't need to in order to continue where I left off. The top left has just this like a back button, but it's library button. Takes you out of the book and back to the library. You have uh, table of contents button. Your table of contents and um, appearance button. I can change the appearance, change appearance, the size of the font, the color of the font. Um, search button. I can do a search right within the book, and I can actually search for um, anything I want that that may appear in the book. Page bookmark off button. So, if I want to bookmark a particular page to remember it, come back to it, I can do that. 9-5 on the floating palace vertical line Titanic, the most complete story ever told, anniversary edition. And that is actually where it's going to start reading. That's the, the book, like, content area. But I will swipe to the right. Play audio, hello. M4A button. Now that you might hear if I play that. There's an audio clip here. Um, but let's go on for a minute. Page chooser. Page 72. Adjustable. Double tap and hold. Then drag left or right to change the page. Swipe up or down with one finger to adjust the value. Two ways to change your page. You can swipe up. Page 73. Down. Page 72. But you can also double tap, hold, and slide your finger to change multiple pages at a time. And we have... Go back to page 73. Link. Page number 72 of 172. 10 pages left. 
Ten pages left in this chapter, that is. Ten pages. All right. So if I want to read, I swipe back to that area where the, the content was, and I just let it read. Or I do a two-finger swipe down once I get to that area so that it will automatically turn the turn the page for me. So that's a really cool feature. If you wanted to just continuously read, you two-finger swipe down when you're in the book content area, and then it will even turn the pages for you. Every once in a while, you'll run into a book that the, the complexity of it or something may prevent that, but most of the time, it's going to work flawlessly, and it'll just keep turning the page and just keep right on reading. Now, if I want to demonstrate reading it... Page, go back, page, play audio. Nine five often saw that steerage passengers spent all their time lower down in the ship, while first class travelers spent their time on higher decks. This is not entirely true. Though no first class passenger would have had stage rooms down on G deck, the squash court was on this deck. Also, many third class amenities were actually on the same deck as first class amenities and stage rooms. First class passengers definitely had permission to go up higher in the ship than those in third class, but the main segregations were by section not necessarily by level. The shelter deck, for example, contained first-class suites, the second-class library, third-class general and smoking rooms, some crew accommodations, cabins for the maids and servants who accompanied many of the first-class passengers, the first-class barber shop, the doctor's office, purser's office, and even hatches for loading the ship. During the disaster, almost all passengers would have had to travel up from their cabins since all of Titanic's lifeboats were on the boat deck. All right, so it is. it happens to be, we were not at the beginning of a chapter or even at the beginning of a section, so it just picked up right where it was. But this particular page goes into, they're talking about, there was a, there were some deck plans and um, a web link on here, and also uh, a menu. There's a, um, starting on this page, a um, menu of what was served on the Titanic. And so we put a little audio clip. Play audio, glow. M4A button. That was actually played available. on the Titanic. It's um, an old song called Glowworm. I want to see if it'll play. Maybe it will. Let me see what that sounds like. Pause audio, glow. M4A It is playing, but very, very softly. I don't know if anybody can even hear it. No, no, it's audible. You can hear it. Very well, actually. Really? Yeah. So we'll pause that. Pause audio. Play audio. Glow. The rotor. The rotor works in Apple Books. We have a, you know... 9-5 highlights. We can, if we were to make a highlight in the book, we can use the rotor to swipe through or swipe between highlights. Edit. Edit. We'll look at that in a minute, because right now, there's nothing in the edit rotor, but that'll change if we select some text. Screen recognition, language, teeth containers, vertical text, select lines. So let's go um, find a word we want to select here. Often thought that steerage passengers spent all oh maybe steerage will be in the dictionary all passenger steerage that'd be interesting let's go to text selection lines text selection we taught you how to select Swipe text right to expand word selection select the word steerage steerage selected now i'm gonna turn the rotor to edit line words character actions highlights edit and let's see what we have share selection add note highlight look up search Translate. Copy. Share selection. Look at all those different options. So we're going to say look up. Add note. Highlight. Look up. Steer it. Sheet grabber. Button. Close button. Look up now shows personalized suggestions from the web, iTunes, the App Store, movie showtimes, nearby locations, and more. Okay. You can adjust this in settings. Continue. Button. Continue. Steer, middle dot, age, vertical line, modifier, vertical line, steerage, vertical line, noun, one. The part of a ship providing accommodations for passengers with the cheapest tickets, two. The action of steering a boat, New Oxford American Dictionary. So there we go. We got the definition of steerage. And you can see... Steerage, vertical line, modifier, vertical line, street, I-R-I-D, as vertical line, noun, bullet, viajar, on ter Sarah or on la bodega, del barco, grand dictionario, Oxford. Espanol Ingles, Bulletin Ingles, They have it in Spanish, too. 
Siri knowledge heading. They have Siri knowledge, which is what you were just hearing in that little uh, tip that it gave us first, that this is not just going to be a dictionary. You're going to get other results. So here's steer, yeah, Siri. Siri knowledge about the word steerage. Steerage. Steerage is the lower deck of a ship where the cargo is stored above the closed hold. In the late 19th and early 20th century, steamship steerage decks were used to provide the lowest cost and lowest class of travel, often for European and Chinese immigrants to North America. With limited privacy and security, inadequate sanitary conditions, and poor food, steerage was often decried as inhumane, and was eventually replaced on ocean liners with third-class cabins. Wikipedia so that was a, a Wikipedia result that Siri uh, displayed for us. Siri suggested websites heading definition of steerage vertical line dictionary dot com steerage passengers emigrants between decks emigrants traveling steerage the experiences and conditions of on a transatlantic journey norwayheritage dot com slash steerage dot age. Okay, so you get the idea. This has a whole bunch of results. We can definition steerage passenger sheet grab sheet steerage head and let's see sheet grabber button that's probably gonna double tap to expand the sheet yeah that would make this even bigger steer close we're gonna button. close it instead library button bookmark all right so you see how all that works how easy it is to select text to share it to make a note that's gonna appear right in the book or uh to highlight the text and it, and just to show you if we go to the table of contents page should go back page, not page, so appear in table of content share button we can share the book titanic resume button. we can resume where we left off selected contents button and we can choose between contents bookmarks button. bookmarks three notes button and notes three. some books would even have a glossary here swipe up copyright page 2 forward page 3 dedications Page 7, excerpt, page 9, 1, where it all began, page 10, 2, impressively grand, incredibly vulnerable, page 22. So you can, any of these... Or down to select a custom action, then double tap to activate. Any of these chapters you just double tap on, it will take you to those chapters, or sections like forward and stuff. We're just going to hit, um, actually I want to hit, I want to go back because... Dedications, forward, page 3. Selected for. I was thinking to myself the other day that I, I want to read this again. I, I make a habit of reading it every year to make sure I don't need to modify anything, any mistakes I made, or new information that may have been found. And uh, I did a big modification, a big rewrite in time for this past spring, uh, which is the anniversary of the disaster in April, of course. Um, and I haven't really read it since then. And now that I've been, you know, removed from it for several months, I was just thinking the other day that I want to read this again. Uh, so um, it's, I, I, you know, have myself set up to do that now by being at the forward. So let's uh, get out of this book here. Library, but library. Now, reading now. I'm not going to spend much time in the books app apart from reading a book because um, the rest of it you can figure out if you followed me on the TV app and the music app, you can figure out the podcasts and the books apps as far as how to search for stuff, how to, you know, locate things. Uh, and, and again, there are audio books in Apple Books as well. So um, one of the questions we get is, can I use the Apple Books app to import today's books that I already have? You can definitely import books in the EPUB format, E-P-U-B, and in the PDF format. Apple Books is a great way to um, to store your PDFs, although it's not the only way. iCloud Drive itself in the Files app, which we're going to learn about uh, very soon, is also a great place for PDFs. Um, but if you got a book that is specifically a book, whether it's EPUB or PDF, you might want it in the Apple Books app. You can download it and choose the, the share option and then copy it to books. Now, it is not possible to. Whoop, reading. Now. Sorry, it is not possible to import Audible books into your Apple Books app. Um, the Audible service is not compatible in that way. I think it's DRM protected. Um, many of the audiobooks you will buy in Apple Books do actually come from or were produced by or distributed by Audible, but. Read Actually, you cannot import audio books that are in the Audible app. 
Uh, if you attempt to import oh, some audio files from your computer or something into the Books app, it may or may not have the desired results. The, the way that audiobooks have to be structured is a bit different from just regular, you know, you can't just record a file in MP3 or M4A and and call it an audiobook and expect it to actually be treated like one. There are very specific ways that an audiobook has to set up and even uh, to be set up and even a slightly different format. So it's not completely out of the question. There's some third-party apps that can maybe help that claim that they can. Uh, but most often your audiobooks are going to come directly from Apple Books. And there's, you know, thousands upon thousands of selections of regular digital books and also audio. Some of them free, some of them paid. We're going to try to take a quick look at maps here. Just to give you some examples of things you can do with it, one of the most common things we're going to want to use Apple Maps for is to find business information and then maybe get directions to it. So if I if I touch near the bottom of the screen here right now in maps. Vertical scroll mark my location button report an issue button. Where am I at here? Map home home has a let street maple drive okay. black valley vertical 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 scroll terms and conditions but map home has a let made low pick oak street holler black valve and milk at my location for one card controller half screen button okay adjust the size of the card overlaying the map actions available a card controller i know that's something we haven't taught you yet a card controller is used in apps where it might be necessary to display additional information while still seeing the rest of the information you were previously seeing. All right. In other words, in Apple Maps, you might pull up a business card, a place card with details about a business, a restaurant or a, you know, whatever. And you want to see that information. You want to see the restaurant's hours and you want to see their menu or their phone number and stuff. But you also, especially if you can see, you still want to see the map at the same time so that you know where you're going. And so that is what a card controller is used for. And well, that's what a, yes, the card controller is designed to change the size of the card that is overlaying the screen because what they'll do is they'll use an overlay all right now i got the place card overlaying half of the screen it said the card is half size and so you can adjust it here with the rotor collapse expand activate default all right so remember that term most of the time this will have no impact on voiceover users whatsoever but if it ever seems like you can't access what you want, like focus is jumping, or like you're only getting part of the information on the card, try adjusting the size of the card overlay to make it full screen. That used to be a big deal in maps. There was a time you actually had to do that in order for voiceover to even let you use the card overlay. That's not the case anymore. Uh, but I still would just keep it in the back of your mind. It's good to understand what these card overlays do, why they exist. And again, it's just helping you to understand iOS. Now, as we swipe right, map modes button, tracking off button. If it Change seems tracking options, that's another important one. If it seems like the results you're getting when you search for stuff are not local to you, just double tap on this tracking button to turn it on, and then everything will instantly be brought to your current location. It's not that the map doesn't know where your current location is, but it's that you have the power to look anywhere you want on this map. And sometimes I've had where my kids were looking at my phone and they were looking at the map, and next thing I know I do a search result, uh, I do a search for you know, a pizza place, and I'm getting results from Chicago, you know, well, then all I have to do is double tap on the, uh, and, and Siri won't do that, by the way. If you ask Siri, you know, near me, Siri knows where you are, uh, but th that's tracking button is how you can force the map back to where you are as well. All right, so now we're getting towards the search area. Clear, 64 degrees, air quality, 53, moderate. Okay, swipe to the right. Search maps, search field. 
Double tap to edit, and swipe it, up or down to select a custom action, then double tap to activate. And by the way, if I keep going, dictate, profile, button, Siri suggestions, heading, 11 minutes to near river view rope, favorites, heading. There's some Siri suggestions based on things in the calendar or otherwise, and then more, button, home, close by, work, add, but mom and dad's house, 88 miles, but add, button. Briefcase, diagram, recents, heading. Now we have places I've recently been or, or searched for. More, button. Fairways Bar and Grill, 134 Rivers, Bet Mike's Place, La Fiesta Mexican Bar and Grill, Editor's Picks, heading. Now we have Editor's Picks, and these are things that the Apple Maps curators have. Explore Guides, where do you want to explore? So, I can choose where I want to go. Fall Road Trips in National Parks. National Park Foundation, button, a guide to America's Grand Circle, culture trip, button, Native American Post Office murals, explore guides, button. Okay, then I have my personal guides that I've created, and a guide is like a a, a collection of places that you gather together for any reason. They could be based on a city, a destination, an activity. I often create a guide when we're taking trips, like this past summer we took a trip uh, to a nearby city to go to this really popular science center and to go to, well, we were going to go to the zoo, but it's very, very um, expansive and the weather was like 90 some degrees and there were all kinds of heat advisory stuff. So we didn't end up going to the zoo, but we stayed at a hotel and, you know, um, went to some restaurants and did some shopping. So all these different places we wanted to go, we created a guide. So when I get to my guides, Mammal, out my guides, heading, more, button, favorite restaurants, 21 places. There's a guide of down to select a custom uh, action, then double tap to activate. There's a guide of favorite restaurants. Pittsburgh trip, seven places. There's that swipe up or down to select a custom action, then double tap to activate. There's what I'm talking about. Let's just go in there. Map Gibsonia we X Ford. The date added button sort by. So we can sort by close button. There's the close button. Sort by. Okay. Date added button. Right now we're sorting by date added. So let's see what's in here. The waterfront, shopping center, homes, IKEA, home decor, Ross Park Mall, shopping center, Fogo de Chao, Brazilian cuisine, embassy suites by Hilton, hotel, Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium, zoo, Carnegie Science Center, Science Museum, Pittsburgh, open, 10 a.m., 5 p.m. See, it tells me all these. Word app, vertical scroll, Carnegie site map. So, Pittsburgh Zoo. If we want to pick one of these, let's just go to the Embassy, Fogo de Chao, Brazilian cuisine. Let's go to the restaurant because the restaurants always have a lot of information on their place cards. Close button. Again, we have a close button. Fogo de Chao, Brazilian cuisine, one hour, 56 minutes, driving button. Reserve button. You can reserve a, a table right in here. More button. Hours open. Rate. Cost three dollar signs. That's just giving you an indication of what to expect price wise. Distance ninety miles. Button image a screenshot of a map with text and numbers. Ross Park Mall. Coralopolis Ross Town Sheer Moon Township. Button image a glass of beverage topped with mint leaves and a slice of lemon. Open table. You get all these pictures. Button image a piece of meat on a plate. Open table. That's a really neat restaurant, by the way. Button. Image. A group of tables and chairs in front of a tan wall with a group of brown patterns. Open I, table. I love how voiceover does this. Button. Image. Glasses of beverages on a table. Open table. Button. Image. An assortment of seafood items on a table. Open t Button. Image. A photo containing a storefront. Go to Chio. Button. Image. People sitting at a table with a variety of food items on it. Open table. All right, so once we get past the photos, button, 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 open, open table, call, button. I can see even more on open table and, and make a reservation. I can call them, website, button, visit their website, guides, button, guides. Well, it's already in a guide, but I could add it to another guide, share, button. I can share this place with somebody. And by the way, you can share entire guides with someone too. If people are traveling with you, you can share the guide. Add photos. We can add our own photos. Rate this place. We can provide a rating. Hours, 10.30 a.m., 9.30 p.m., open. So that tells you the hours. Happy hour, 4.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m., 4.30 p.m., 
6.30 p.m. Curbside pickup, 10.30 a.m., 9.30 All these different hours. More. And then... Ratings and reviews button heading. We're going to see some ratings open and reviews. Ta open table, 4.5 stars, 1,052 reviews. Okay. Beatrice, middle dot, last month, 4.0 stars. We enjoyed our dinner at Fogo to Chow. Food was delicious and servers were super. I recommend a quiet night like Monday. Avoid Saturday evening if you can. All right. So there was their review. We could read others, but let's keep going. In good to know, takeout, delivery, outdoor dining, brunch, full bar, happy hour, parking garage, contactless payments, accepts Apple Pay, more. But See, all of that was under good to know. So you know all that about them. Details, heading. Here's where. Fogo to chat, close, but Pittsburgh trip. Phone, Pittsburgh trip, seven places. It shows me that it's in that guide. It actually gives me the phone number. Phone, plus one, four, one, website, fogatoja.com, but address, five, two, more on open table button. So this is amazing. Now, when I... Card, Fogo, just one, reserve, more. When I want to get directions to this... Hours, rate, not more, reserve, one hour, 56 minutes, driving, button. That's what... I'm going to double tap on near the top, and I'm not going to go any further than that today because when I want to get directions, I'll, I'll do this on Wednesday, and I'll use a second device uh, so I can let you hear that. I mean, I'm really not going to, you're still not going to hear much because we're not actually in a car traveling, but that button near the top, Fogo here's your close, your close button. button, you swipe to the right, Fogo to chow. one hour, 56 minutes, driving button. And when you double tap that, you'll be able to get a list of the steps. Um, by double tapping on what it says is the fastest route and you can read step by step or you can swipe to the right and you can actually start navigating. The search option, as I'm going to show you now, even has, if you don't type anything in, uh, it has the uh, nearby points of interest automatically displayed. So I'm going to show you that. I've gone into maps now. Maps, sheet grabber, button. Map modes, button, tracking, clear, search, clear, 64 degrees, air quality, 55, moderate, search maps, search field, double tap to edit. So again, you can search for a place or an address. I'm, I'm going to double tap that. Insertion point at end, search suggestions, recents, heading. Because I want you to see that just to the right of the edit field, you have these search suggestions. Recents are the first Cancel. Search category. And if we go past that, Fairwood Gateway, Pizza, Find Near, COV, Find Nearby, Heading. Find Nearby. And this is the points of interest I was talking about. COVID 19 vaccines, gas stations, fast food, coffee shops, restaurants, convenience stores, dinner, rest stops. Hotels, button, lunch, button, breakfast, button, grocery stores, but editors, picks, heading. Look at all those different choices. I don't think you get quite as many choices on the iPhone. I think the iPad gives you more choices, but uh, you get the idea. And it does, it is dynamic. So on, especially on the phone, because there are fewer choices, like at, you know, five o'clock in the evening, it's not going to suggest breakfast or lunch. It's going to suggest dinner, those kinds of things. Um, Speaking of the iPad, by the way, when we do the iPad course, we'll get into this more. But I just want to point out that if you are going to use turn by turn directions uh, on an iPad, you have to have a Wi-Fi plus cellular iPad. Uh, the iPhone will do it. You can do it with CarPlay. But in order for the iPad to do it, it has to be Wi-Fi plus cellular. It cannot be Wi-Fi only. Uh, I, I used to think mistakenly years ago that, you know, as long as I had a Wi-Fi connection, I could get turn by turn directions on the iPad. Uh, that's not true because the iPad actually lacks the, uh, the, the GPS chip that allows for, uh, true turn by turn navigation. It's only in the cellular Wi-Fi plus cellular model of the iPad that it has it. So just to keep that in mind, um, all right, so what I'll do here is, so let's pick a place. All right, we'll go to this, uh, we'll go to Pizza Hut here. And, and it's going to bring up the place card, which I showed you the place cards already on Monday. We talked about card controllers. Pizza Hut, Bedford. Sheet grabber, button, Pizza Hut. 
38 miles. Okay, that's not Pizza Hut. Let's see. 38 Pizza Hut. 38 that's... miles. Map Mill Creek. Let's no, see which one I'm looking at here because my, my peep, oh, yeah, it's this one. She knocked my track. Peep, nine, edits, nineteen found. Edits are closed. What Pizza Hut? Seven point four miles. That's the one. Pizza Hut. Okay. Pizza closed. So pizza double hut. tap on that. Okay. Close button. And because uh, I found nineteen of them, and I had to get the one that I wanted, which is the closest one to me. Now, um. What I want to show you is what it's like to get directions. Obviously, we're not going to go very far with this because I'm not in a car driving. Uh, but I just want to show you what the interface looks like. You can uh, actually get driving, walking, um, public transit if it's available in your area, uh, directions, and even um, riding with apps like Uber, for example. Pizza Hut. 17 minutes menu driving button. Okay, there's the driving button. And menu. If I double tap on driving, uh, what's, oh, you know what? I, I, no, that was the menu button. It said driving, but that was the, that actually took me to the menu on Yelp, which that is why it said that. Okay, so let's go back here again. Okay. There's the button I wanted. I'm sorry. Menu. Driving. That also says driving, but it says menu. And, and so you can easily display the menu for the, the restaurant. And you remember from the place card discussion on Monday that you can call, you can, uh, you can visit their website, you can see the useful to know. But if we double tap on that where it says 17 minutes driving button, we do that. 17 map Denny's. Now it brings up, Pizza. it brings up the um, directions here. <laughs> And what we have from to Pizza Hut, clear sixty four to Pizza Hut. Okay, that's directions to Pizza Hut. Now here, from, from my location button, and that's correct. I want it to be from where I'm at currently. Leaving now button. Leaving now. You can actually change that if you plan to leave later and you want to map this out. Close button. There's the close button. Selected drive button, walk button, transit button, cycle button, 17 minutes, 12 miles, fastest route. See, I have four choices there, driving, walking, cycling, or uh, transit. And it tells me uh, 17 minutes, 12 miles, fastest route. On an iPhone, yeah. uh, and it appears that that's how we do it here now, too. I think they've changed this a little because it used to be on the, I think on the iPad, there was a list steps button next to it. But on the iPhone, you double tapped on the amount of time. And that's what actually seems to be happening here now as well. 17 minutes, 12 miles, fastest route. If I double tap on that. 17 minutes, 12 miles, fastest route. One. That preview route. Nope, nope, it didn't change. Double tap to show each trip segment. Okay, so on the iPhone, you would double tap on that where it says 17 minutes, 12 miles, fastest route. You would just double tap on that. But on the iPad, it I was wrong. They did not change it. It's still what it used to be, which is there's a separate button to list the steps. It's called preview route. Preview route. Button. It's just, it threw double me. Tap to show each trip segment. Yeah, it threw me because it's to the right of the go button instead of to the, to the left of it. So here's go. That's what you want to double tap if you are ready to start navigating. But if you want to see the route ahead of time, you double tap again on your iPhone on the actual 17 minutes, 12 miles on that thing. But on the iPad, you double tap on this thing. Preview route button. Okay. Preview route button. Sheet grabber button. Map modes. Trip clear to Pizza Hut. Done button. And there's the done button. And I'm finished looking at the trip segments. But if I want to see this now, I can swipe to the right. 415, 300 feet, turn right onto Cable Street. So in 300 feet, I'm going to make a right turn. 450 feet, turn left onto 0.6 miles. Turn 600 feet, 5.8 miles. Keep right onto US. You Coast. see, so all I've got to do is read this and it's giving me every direction. When I'm finished with that, we'll go back to the left and we'll hit done. To done. And now, to Pizza Hut from. Let's start navigating. Selected walk up trip seventeen go button. Starting route to Pizza Hut. 
Start on Locust Drive. Northeast on Locust Drive. Double then turn to right. All right. So what I have now is a screen where if we were driving, the directions would keep updating. And it's really cool because with voiceover, you can actually tap on the screen and you'll see the distance change. Like, you know, you're supposed to turn right in two miles and then it'll show, you know, 1.8 miles, 1.6 miles, you know, uh, eventually, you know, 500 feet, 400, whatever. So it's really cool because you can help other people if you're, you know, not able to see, but you just in the, you know, a passenger and you've got maps up here, you can help actually really help other people with that. Now, Heading 243 degrees southwest. There's my compass. And I don't, I, I, uh, that's an optional thing you can turn on in settings. I have the compass showing. All guidance button, right turn. Okay. Overview mode and all guidance. I don't even recommend touching those. That's personal preference, but it's going to determine how much is spoken to you. Uh, and it tells me right turn. Street, alerts only. Button. See, and there's buttons for alerts only. No we don't want to do any of that. That's for sure. Two thirty-eight. Right now, based on current traffic, I'd arrive at two thirty-eight. Seventeen minutes. Twelve miles. Expand button. Image a white circle with a black symbol on it. Up arrow. Remember, we talked about card overlays. We can expand this, and I don't even think I have to double tap it because VoiceOver automatically expands it if I keep swiping. Dimmed button. Yep, here it goes. Collapse button. See, Image. now it became collapsed. And what do you have? You have add a stop. We need to stop on the way for gas or something. Share ETA. You can share your ETA with someone. Report an incident. You can report something. End route. End route. End route. And uh, that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and end the route because uh, we're not driving. And then I'm going to go over here and close that. Close button. Pizza Hut, 19 feet. And I have to Pizza close clear. this too. Track clear, 16 feet. And I added close button. And I think I'm back now. Search maps, search field. Yep, I am. So that's a little bit of a preview. Uh, you know, obviously it would be more. Um, Meaningful if you actually had uh, the, uh, you know, if we were actually driving and you had the directions updating and so forth, but at least you get the idea. If you don't uh, see everything you're looking for, hit that expand button. But as I said, really, you don't even need to with voiceover because if you swipe past it, it automatically expands for you and uh, then it becomes collapse. And so those options like to add a stop or to end the route or to share your ETA with other people. Those options are, are right there. And again, these are all features that are really, really awesome that we could talk about. We could take the entire session talking about maps today, and we don't want to do that um, in the interest of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll start explaining to you all about voice memos and, and talking a little about it, and then we can demo it uh, in a moment. So the voice memos app um, is, is the next one that I wanted to cover today. It is truly going to be the only audio recorder that you will need for basic audio. Now, if you want to do multi-track recording, advanced editing, uh, you know, uh, overlaying, you know, music and spoken audio and that kind of thing, then we're going to be looking at other apps. Then we're going to be looking at GarageBand maybe Ferrite Recording Studio, um, maybe Backpack, um, apps like this. And, and there will be some digital cafes, some TTJ cafes coming up on those topics. We'll even show you how to do that from the Mac um, because uh, Trainer, Cliff, uh, Trainer Cliff has uh, found some really, really excellent Mac audio editing apps. I now use them as well. Well, I use some of them, not all of them that he uses, but I, I you know, I use uh, some of them. And uh, so we will show you that as well. But on iPhone and iPad, there's also plenty of apps you can do that with, you know, again, GarageBand, Fairite. And so when you want to talk about multi-track recording, that's a different, uh, different animal. But if you just want to do a basic audio recording, and even even some basic editing. 
then the voice memos app is all you're going to need. Now, there's no recording limit. You're only limited by how much storage space you have. Voice memos are stored in iCloud, if you allow that, which means they'll be available on all your devices, iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, okay? So your your voice memos. Um, Sorry, Matt, I was in the wrong window, but another app that people will recognize coming from the Windows world is Goldwave is actually an iOS app now also. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay. Interesting. Um, so uh, with, um, with voice memos, you have um, the ability to make a recording. You can pause while you're recording and then resume. Uh, you, can put, you can perform simple edits. You can trim uh, the beginning and the end of voice memos. You can replace the, um, you know, the content of a voice memo. If you've made a mistake, you can do that kind of thing. You can enhance your recording so the sound quality is improved and some of the background noise is removed. And, of course, you can even share your voice memos in a number of ways. So um, you, can, you can send, if they're small enough, if they're short enough, you can send them as a message or uh, an email. Uh, email, the size really doesn't matter. Um, because there's a feature called mail drop that we haven't learned about yet in this class, but we will. Um, and so you can send pretty much any size attachment um, through mail drop. Uh, you can also send your voice memos um, to other audio apps, depending on what you have installed. And you can even save your voice memos to the files app. You could make an iCloud shared folder. Um, for other people, which, you know, we're going to learn about the files app soon too. And, uh, the other thing is within the voice memos app, you can organize your recordings in folders. Uh, you can uh, create any number of folders that you want and you can, uh, store your voice memos there. And, uh, that allows you to quickly and easily, uh, keep track of them and, and you can give them names. They, they are, uh, recorded. Uh, with um, a, a system that uh, if you allow location access, it will, it will put your location on the voice memo, but you can rename them with a unique name anytime you want to. So um, that's a little bit of an overview. Uh, the voice memos app is another one of those apps that uses the card overlay that we talked about uh, from Maps. When you are recording you will find the audio waveforms on the screen, uh, which uh, uh, show people, you know, what the, the volume is doing, what the, you know, the audio is doing. And then uh, you'll find that the recording and playback controls overlay that. Record. Okay. This is a test recording for the voiceover class today. This is November the 10th, 2022. Recording six. Okay. September. Search dictate. Okay. Five hundred three and land chat. Okay. Tech play. Button. Okay. Now here's the recording. This is a test recording for the voiceover class today. This is November the tenth, two thousand twenty-two. Okay, it is the tenth, the tenth, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, what do you yeah, want me? To that that is right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what do you want me? To Rewind. 15 seconds. Playback settings. Track position. Eight. Playback settings. Button. Now, playback settings are kind of cool. The, uh, Matt, I'm not sure if you're there. Um, I'm going to yep, open. Yep, play I'm here. I, yep. Okay. I'm going to open playback settings. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Sure. Sure. Okay. Options. Heading. Close. Button. Playback speed. Heading. Playback speed slider. 1x. Adjustable. Skip silence. Switch button. Off. Okay, so now double tap to toggle setting. There's this thing power. called skip silence. Double tap to dismiss so say I'm recording something and there's a long pause. You know, somebody's talking and then there's a pause or there's something. If you do this skip silence, 
I, sh I should have probably paused it, but <laughs> um, that, um, that, that it'll take that pause out of your recording, which is really cool. I mean, the, this voice recording app is, um, I don't need any other recorder. Now, if you're doing professional stuff, you know, there's like Audacity and, you know, other recording apps and all kinds of fancy, you know, other things that you can do. But for, for my purposes, this is all I need. I mean, the quality is really good. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Options. Heading, close, playback, play, skip, and enhance recording. Switch button, off. Okay, so let's try enhance recording. On. Okay, enhance so. Enhance on. Okay, and now I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I don't know if there were any pauses, but I'm going to do the. Skip silence. Switch button, on. Okay, skip silence, on. So let's go back and play this. Playback speed slider. Playback speed. Heading, close, button. Okay. Right. Recording of the Mark Twain Riverboat okay. Tour. Hannibal Miser track position. Track position, selected. Playback settings, but rewind, 15, play, but This is a test recording for the voiceover class today. This is November the 10th, 2022. Okay, so- You can really tell the difference about the enhanced recording there. Yeah, it's a little deeper, like it got rid of that air noise. You know, there was like some, you could hear a little air, you know, I've got a fan, not a, you know, whatever, air filter thing. Um, and so, yeah, it does. It makes it deeper, kind of a deeper kind of thing. What else do you want to do here? Um, um, well, let's let's show them what the rotor actions are on a particular recording, because that's where you can headings. when it's when it's selected, you can rename uh, headings, actions, edit title, edit title, more actions, right? More actions. Yep. OK, so you want edit title? Um, sure, yeah. Wait, 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 okay. Edit title. Text field is editing. 503 and land jack select. Okay. I'm going to delete. Delete. Selection deleted. 503 okay. and land jack play. Button. Okay. Delete. Okay. And search. Dictate. Button. Test recording for the voiceover class on November the 10th. Inserted test recording for the voiceover class on November 10th. Text field. Is editing 140 text dictate search edit button all recordings okay so I, so i did it already I, did, I didn't have to do it i didn't have to save did i over one more action track position selected playback settings. yeah no there was no save here and so what i did was whenever you're in a text editable field okay whenever this keyboard is up there's usually a dictate button to the bottom right of the space bar, you could one finger double tap that. But the really easier thing is anytime you're in a text editable field, you can do a two finger double tap, the magic tap, when you're in a text editable field and you can dictate text. And what's really, when you're dictating, keep in mind, talk as quickly as you can and as, uh, you don't have to talk louder, you don't have to talk, you know, enunciate everyone, <laughs> but you do want to use punctuation because uh, I've seen just some horrific texts from people that are run on sentences. <laughs> so, unbelievable. So you really do want to put punctuation <laughs> when you're dictating. Um, so wh what else are we doing here? Search. Uh, Search the edit button. Okay. There's um, what we're seeing here in this app is again, this is not a tabbed app. It's a list app. You have your list of voice memos and then you have a, you know, the, the controls uh, with the play and record and all of that. And when you select a memo, you can play it, you can pause it, you can, you know, edit everything in the rotor. Again, just use what we've taught you, right? Use the actions rotor, all these features, you know, you can edit your voice memo. You can go back in and replace <laughs> you know, mistakes that you've made or trim the beginning, but all of this can be found by looking in the rotor, predictable patterns, right? Yeah. Now what also happens just to keep in mind, like what's up on the screen here is the top of the screen has the thing we just did, the sample. Okay. Now as I swipe right, the very first one says, recording of the Mark Twain Riverboat tour. Okay. Recording of the, now when I double tap, 
when I double tap recording of the Mark Train River tour, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to collapse the, the one I'm just doing, the test one. Okay, so it's going to take me back to my list of my recordings. Okay, and then to play this Mark Twain one, you want to one finger double tap. So what happens is, is it opens and collapses, opens and collapses. So is that making sense? So you want to be. Yes, yes, that does. Yeah, I always go back to my main, uh, again, you know, Miss Compulsive, hear me. Um, I go back all the time to my main list so that if I'm in a brand new place, I don't want to be in this test recording when I quick want to want to make a recording, you know. Um, so um, I always have the list collapsed so that when I open that voice memos app, boom, the recording button is at the bottom and i think for sighted people it's a great big red button um i think you know so if you're dealing with a sighted person you go okay hit that red record button at the bottom <laughs> okay you know what i mean um if you're working with sighted people and these recordings are shareable like for example like uh recording 10 okay recording of the mark twain river Boat okay Tour. recording of the mac train okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna oh, sorry i'm gonna flick up on it more actions. More actions. Move to folder. Move to folder. Delete. Delete. Favorite. Favorite. Activate. Okay, so let's go. Favorite. Delete. Move to folder. Uh, more actions. Let's go more actions. Perform recording of the Mark Twain Riverboat Tour. Panable. Close. But copy. But share. But share. Okay. See, so I could share that. Edit recording. I could edit but it. Duplicate. Okay, but so now I'm going to collapse it. Dismiss pop up. Okay, and how I did that. Because I. I took an action on a recording that was in the list. So when I open those actions, like the share and all that, uh, then you want to collapse it. You want to uh, dismiss the pop-up. And a, a lot of times when these things open up, what you want to do is lift your hand and come up to the top left and you should find the dismiss pop-up. Try to get away from dragging your finger. I know <laughs> we've said this a lot, but it really does. When you're dragging your finger, most of the time voiceover is jumping everywhere and you're missing elements. So lift your hand and come back down and flick like you're going to flick a piece of dust. Okay. And that will get you so much further and will get you so much more information. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great demo. I think, I think that's, that's going to do quite well. You know, again, as we, as we've been saying, it's not about teaching you every aspect and every gesture and every step, you know, we just can't do that uh, in the time that we have, but what we're trying to do is give you uh, enough information, right. To get started. Uh, yeah. If you get an audio file from wherever you get it, as long as it's in the right format, uh, that can be imported into voice memo so that you can either just save it there or so that you can, you know, do something to it. Remember, voice memos does support simple editing. It, it you know, a lot of people have talked about if you can trim the beginning, you can trim the end so that what you're left with is the middle. Uh, you can add to a, a voice memo um, by choosing the replace option and then just it'll just keep going or you can literally use it to replace a part of a voice memo. About the only thing you can't do when it comes to those basic edits, uh, of course, there's more advanced editing that, you know, but the basic edit that, that is not available in voice memos is the idea that you have to uh, remove various parts throughout. Like if somebody has said to me, well, I recorded a band rehearsal, but I want to take out all the talking and, and leave only the songs, you know, and they're going to have to make multiple cuts. That's not available in voice memos. Because actually, that's not really a basic editing feature. That's actually a pretty advanced editing feature that requires you to know how to split clips and merge clips and things like that. So for that, you need GarageBand or Fairrite. You know, there are accessible ways to do it, uh, but just not in voice memos. But um, there is a lot you can do with it. So it's, it's a really, really good app to get to know. Well, I'm going to just do a, re a quick, real <laughs> quick recording. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, guys, here's a quick counting, and I'm going to deliberately miscount. One, two, three, seven, five. Okay. Current position, 12.9 sec caps. I, got I want to go back 12, 12, 10, 10, 8, 8, 6, all the way back, just so. Okay. Replay button. Hey guys, here's a quick counting, and I'm going to deliberately miscount. One, two, three. Re current replace button. Four. Toolbar. Record. Okay. Duration. Let's see how well that works. I don't know, guys. Five current replay. Two, three. Four, five. You just have to make sure when you're finished, you hit. Let's see. Playback. Is there a done button? Move. Favorite. Share. Record. I thought there'd be a done button here. We can start talking about photos. And before we do that, I, I want to go over a couple of 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 caveats here. Um. Anyway, which are to make sure that you are actually able to do this stuff. Okay. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a device that has a neural engine, okay? And that's only been in the past few years. It's got to be at least the A12 processor, I think. And let me think if the A11 has it. I don't, I don't remember, but it's the, it's the, A, it, the, 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 the devices that have it, your iPhone... 10 does not. iPhone 8 does not. Original iPhone SE does not. So it's got to be at least, I think the 10R series, 10S, 10R, that one did have it. I think that's where it started. And anything newer, iPhone 11, 12, 13. Uh, your iPads, the, the regular quote unquote iPad, you know, um, is now called the 10.2 inch iPad you have to have at least the eighth generation iPad to have a neural engine. Seventh generation doesn't have it and, and nothing before that has it. Uh, iPad Pro, I think probably beginning with the, um, the 2000, I would say the two, now don't hold me to this, but I think the 2018 releases of the iPad Pro are going to be the first ones to have it. And that's going to be the same year as the 10R. So you're, the original 11-inch iPad Pro and I guess the third generation 12.9-inch and then anything newer than that obviously has it. And the, the iPad Air and Minis that have been released in the last you know year or two have it. The newest iPhone SE has it. You've got to have this neural engine. And for, you know, for folks that are using older devices and questioning, is it time for me to upgrade? This feature in and of itself for some people might be enough because you will not believe how much more involved, how much more in the loop you feel when somebody sends a message to you and it you realize just because voiceover is telling you. I mean, any of us, yes, praise God, you know, sighted family, we can ask them, but the voiceover just automatically tells you, you know, that this is a photo of a cat sitting on top of a gray couch or whatever you know i mean it is truly amazing and it is a new level of inclusion that we have only dreamed about i think for a lot of years or or we didn't even dream about it we just thought it wasn't possible you know um now in addition to that and by the way we did a, a really pretty extensive demo of this in the ios 15 tutorial series so if you don't have that yet you can get it for, for $60, uh, or if you have purchased our premier protection plan or you plan to purchase that, let me know that you want the tutorial because that all of our tutorials um, are included in that premier protection plan. They're free of charge, no, no extra charge uh, to get them, but you got to just let me know that you want them, and then I will you know send you the link to them. And that's another iCloud shared folder, but we did a nice demo of the photos app and live text and reading a, an, an image based PDF. Even this is just amazing. So, um, what you also want to do is go into your settings, into accessibility and into voiceover, and then go to voiceover recognition. 
you're going to want to make sure that image recognition and text recognition are turned on at all times. You're also going to want to go ahead and turn screen recognition on because that gives you the ability to use it when you want it. But then what you're going to want to do is add screen recognition to the rotor if it's not there already. Now, screen recognition is not something you're going to want to use in every app. If the app is already accessible, like any of these Apple apps that we've talked about, you don't want screen recognition on because what screen recognition does is it tries to determine what is on the screen in an app that would otherwise be inaccessible. And so if you start using screen recognition in an app that's already accessible, it's going to really mess up the experience. You're going to see things that you don't expect to see. Apps are going to not work the way you expect them to, and it's just not going to make sense to you. So you want screen recognition in the rotor so you can easily and quickly toggle that on and off for those times when the app is inaccessible. But there are times even in, access in apps that are accessible, like certain websites that are not really coded for proper accessibility or image-based PDFs. If you're in the Photos app or the Safari app or anywhere else with a PDF, you know, those, those, P, th those apps are accessible. But the, if, the, if, the, um, if the PDF is an image, you just need to turn on screen recognition and then that PDF becomes accessible. It is truly amazing how well this works. So uh, yes, Rita, if you don't mind, Kylie's almost here now, but I'll just have you go ahead and start if you want and just give an overview. Uh, this is a tabbed app again, so we can look at the bottom of the screen and, and see what the tabs are and then we can go from there. Photos. Okay, so photos. I have opened the, the, the photos app. Okay. And whenever you open an app for the very first time, you've not done it or whatever, you kind of want to explore, you know, and you can flick left and right. You can do a two finger flick up. It'll read the entire screen to you. And like most Apple apps, a lot of apps, there's tabs at the bottom. So I'm going to touch near the bottom. Tab bar, library, tab, one of four. Okay. So it just told me there's four tabs here. A library tab. For you, tab. For you. Selected. Albums. Albums. Tab, three and four. Search. Tab. Search. Four and four. And <clears throat> the search tab, just so you guys know, it looks like um, apparently for sighted people, if you say to somebody, well, go search for that photo, they'll say, where is that? And you say, look for the little, eye, um, what do they call those? Magnifying glasses. It's like a little magnifying glass, you know, a handle held magnifying glass uh, is the graphic for these tabs. So I always keep my, my tab selected for the albums tab, okay? Because albums is where you can find things. Okay. So this is just my, my personal preference. I always keep the, the tab selected and it says selected. For you. Selected. Albums. Albums. Tab. Okay. So I've now got the albums tab selected. Come up to the top of the iPhone or your device and touch just below the status bar. Add button. Okay. There's an ad. Albums. Heading. Albums. My albums. Heading. See all. Button. Recents. 238 photos. Okay, there's Two recents. Smiling at okay, there's recents. Okay. Favorites. 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 Matrons of Spin. September. Okay, there's one called Matrons of Spin that I, I created some albums. And one of them is a group that I, I, I ride a bike bikes with. We spin together. And, well, anyway. Um, Read a medical. Okay, one there's. Photo. Summer fun. Replace seeing AI photos. Okay, Zero there's. Photos. There's. The, and the, the technology is also like seeing AI. It created this folder on its own because I have the seeing AI app. Okay. So the system created this. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go to, let's go to recents. Albums, heading, my albums, see all, but recents. Okay. Video. So September I've got, 18th. I've got recents here. Um, <clears throat> now what has happened is I've only got 200. Matt has, I don't know, 10,000 <laughs> pictures. <laughs> um, you know, some sighted people have thousands and thousands and thousands. Of, I've only got a, not that many, and I try to label them. But I've been a little remiss in the last uh, year <laughs> labeling some of these. 
So let me just touch here. Chat bar. Uh, Library. Okay, Chat. I'm at the very bottom. Okay, so I'm going to flick left. Vertical scroll bar, 16 pages. Photo, October 28th. Two people smiling and posing for a photo. Okay. Maybe read the house. Okay, so I'm going to open that. Photo. Okay, recents. okay. It says, it says two Home. people. Two people smiling for a photo, maybe Rita Howells. And the reason it said maybe Rita Howells is because previously I told the system that this picture was me, labeled it. So if this other person would have been labeled, and I think this is my friend Pam, I'm not sure how much. Edit, okay. first, photo, October 28th. This tells me that this photo was taken October 28th. Okay, so excuse me. So now I'm going to swipe right. Toolbar, photo chooser, photo 238 of 238. Okay, so that tells me it's a 238 photo. Toolbar, share button. I can share it. Favorite. I can favorite it. Info, button. Info. Select, button. Okay, select. Delete, button. Delete. Delete. Okay, so now I'm going to come back up and I'm just going to bring the voiceover cursor to the middle of the screen because this photo is up. So I'm just going to touch near the middle of the screen. Photo. October okay. 28th. And I'm going to do a three finger single tap. Photo 238 of 238. Two people smiling and posing for a photo. Maybe Rita Howells. Center of screen. Okay. So now I'm on the picture. So I can flick up. Explore image. Explore image. Activate. Activate. Default. Show details. Show details. Let's go to the details. Add a caption, text field, creation date, Thursday, October 28th, adjust, button, iCloud status, uh, file name, IMG, camera description, Apple iPhone, file format, J, burst mode. I'm just, image. I'm just flicking. Lens description, front cam, resolution, 4 megapixels, dimensions, 19, 4, file size, 1 point, ISO. So it's giving me all these dimensions, okay? Burst, so file, I'm clicking back. Name, iCloud status, adjust, creation date, add a caption, text field. No. Add a caption, okay? Now, on this add a caption, there's two ways to get descriptions on a photo, okay? One is add a caption. Now, this physically adds text to the picture, okay? So we can do that, okay? Or I can close this and put a voiceover label on the picture, which will tell me what the picture is. But if, if I, you've got to open, the, if you add a caption to a photo, you've got to open it to then read the caption. And there's even a third way that we'll show you now in iOS 15 also. Oh, go, what is it? <laughs> it's that markup option. It's under, I think it's under edit. Okay. Oh. Check to photo. Uh, first, edit button. Okay. Yeah. Edit. Okay. Markup photo. Oh, yeah. Edit. Markup button. Uh, markup. Okay. So I'm going to go to markup. Page one. Selected. Pen. Color. Marker. Color. Pencil. Eraser. Lasso. Ruler. Selected. Add. Button. Add. What am I looking for? Selected. Uh, you have Current. to hit, you have to hit add. Okay. Black. Erase. Pencil. Marker. Selected. Page one. Done. Button. Redo. Undo. Markup. Cancel. Button. Cancel. Markup. Oh, it was at the add. other end. Okay. Uh, is it the ads at the other end? Yeah. Undo, read, done, page, select, marker, pencil, eraser, lasso, ruler, selected, add, button. Yep. Add. And then, okay. and then pencil. say text. And then what? Then you have to find text. Okay. Markup. Oh, why don't you take oh, over from oh, here? <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So, so let's, let's okay. look at a few things here. Uh, I'm opening photos. And the first thing photos, we'll notice. Date range, days, adjustable. I'm not going to swipe up or I am. I am going to change that. Actually, I don't want it on days. I want it on all photos, all photos. OK, I don't know how it got on days, truthfully. But um, there's the first thing we'll notice. Rita already showed you the tabs. That's different on the iPad. So I'm not even going to go there because uh, the iPad has a sidebar. So that's for our iPad class. But let's look at some photos here. Four thousand nine hundred forty five photos. One thousand one hundred fifty five videos. Updated just now. Okay. More button. Select button. Aspect button. Vertical scroll bar. Video. November 3rd. 
More content available. A person sitting at a table with a microphone. David and not Aris. A person sitting at a table with a microphone and it even said his name. And I know exactly what that is. And it, it is right. And it, it the, the name that it put on it is because his name appeared as a as a um, text in the photo. So it not only told me accurately that it was a person sitting at a table with a microphone, but it even told me what the text said in the photo. Now, you can actually identify people in photos so photos so that it will tell you that anyway. But in this case, it actually had the text of his name in the photo. Uh, it was a video, but let's keep going. Photo, November 1st. More content available. An illustration of a person with green hair. Toga. Hair to salon. Okay, that was something my daughter must have been, or my son, one of them was playing Toka Hair Salon. They were both playing it the other day, so it could have been from either one of them, but apparently one of them saved a photo of somebody with green hair. I'm going to just do a few more. I promise I'm not going to keep. I mean, I could do this all day just because I find this to be so cool that it does this and I can look through my photos. But I'm, I promise I'm only going to do a couple more. <laughs> Photo, October 30th. More content available. An illustration of a cartoon character with a pink background. Toga. Okay, that's Harry's also. Photo, October 30th. Live photo, October 29th. More content available. A black background with nothing else. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that was. Photo, October 22nd. More content available. A screenshot of a cell phone screen with text and numbers. 7, 23, 4. More content available. A dog wearing a dog costume and lying on a carpeted surface. There's a good one. Did you hear that? A dog wearing a dog costume and lying on a carpeted surface. More content available. A dog wearing a dog costume and lying on a carpeted surface. Okay. Now, if we want to get even more information, we can use the rotor and we can explore image features. Explore image. Or explore image. So we double tap. Image explorer. Heading. It opens up this special image explorer for voiceover. Done. Button. We can hit done when we're finished. Image. Heading. Okay. Canine. Centered. Use the rotor to access objects. And if there were people or places, that would be in your rotor also. So I can... I can uh, Language See. default containers set the rotor language containers language default objects objects person one face not visible near right edge use the rotor to access objects canine centered use the person one face not visible and near right edge if they were if they use the rotor to access objects if their face were visible it would even tell you like if they were smiling or you know those kinds of things too image description heading. A dog wearing a dog costume and lying on a carpeted surface. Scenes, heading, stuffed animals. Date, heading, October 13th. Time, heading, 8.50 p.m. Orientation, portrait, portrait. Now. Portrait, double image explore, done. We can hit done, but I want to show you. Photos. Photo, September 1st. Okay, here's another one. More content available. A child holding a cat and standing in a dimly lit area. N-E-B-B. Okay. FR. I want to go photo October 22nd. Back photo, to that one. October 20 photo October 13th shared saved. Photo okay. see, see shared photos and videos. Close relevant items from messages can appear in photos. Just tap to reply. Yeah, that's fine. Toolbar. Photo choose photo okay, relevant so I gotta items just from October that. 3rd button. Look button. But edit button. And if I delete detected item info button. Detected item info guys. There's an item in here that it seems to know more information about, and I think it's the dog. Let's see. Select back button. October 13th. Share. But favored. Select delete. Edit. But from Jessica. But info. Heading. Close button. Add a caption. Text. Look up. Dog button. We're going to look that up. Look up. Look up finds results about the content of your photos from the web. You can adjust this and continue. But in progress. Okay, it's looking it up for me. Siri knowledge. Heading. Yorkshire Terrier. The Yorkshire Terrier is one of the smallest dog breeds of the terrier type and of any dog breed. The breed developed during the 19th century in Yorkshire, England. Ideally, its maximum size is 7 pounds. A popular companion dog, the Yorkshire Terrier has also been part of the development of other breeds, such as the Silky Terrier. Most have a black and tan coat, but they are also known to have a silverish gray or a blonde coat. Now, what? Yorkshire Terriers are playful and energetic dogs. Yes, they are. Wikipedia. 
Now, what we just did is we found that there was a dog in the photo. We looked it up and indeed our dog is a Yorkie. I mean, that could not have been more accurate. Uh, it knew the kind of dog it was. And, and this works for different animals. It works for certain uh, famous landmarks. Um, so what we'll do is we'll Siri, not results, results, results. I will heading. dismiss this. Dismiss pop up. Just sort of tap. Double tap to dismiss pop up window. Off to the side and you'll get that message and then you can double tap or you could two fingers scrub. I like to just do it that way. October All right. Share so button. there's a share button. Of course, we can share this photo in lots of ways. And I'm going to show you how to make a simple slideshow uh, yet here before we're done, just because that's really cool. Favored switch button off. We can favorite the photo. Selected detected item info button. Okay, we did that. Delete edit button. So what we were trying to do before was to label this if if we wanted to. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, text detect photo. It cancel adjust markup button. I think I misled Rita. I think it's description not. Tool I just don't remember that. anymore. Photos, photos, but we'll figure it out. Done. Description. Let's try that. Mm. Text field is editing. Yeah, yep, yep. I I lied to you. Okay. It's description. So I'm just okay. gonna say it's the name of, of the name of our our. I'm gonna call it Chica. space. The eight pound. So what do we want to call her? The eight pound terror. Eight space. Space. All Ten. right, and uh, let's see. I don't know if I, I think I misspelled backslash uh, the word space. Let me just look what I did there. Yeah, I, I did misspell that. All right, so I'm going to delete that and fix it because I know I misspelled the word. And it wasn't even necessarily that I typed it wrong. Uh, I don't know what I did. Wow, and, and I could dictate it also. Terror. Discard changes. Whoops, okay, now what I... Okay. Dismiss pop up. I don't want to discard changes. Discard. Okay. So one, did I get one, that? Page one. Undo. Read. So mark pencil. Cup marker. Let me just check and see if I actually add more. Add. Button. Got it in there now. Description. Dismiss text signature. Because when I you see you can put a signature in here. You can do all sort of things. Text field is editing. Add image description. Yeah. All right. We're just gonna put. Uh, we're just going to put Chica. That'll just save time. Return. And then I'll hit. Uh, I think I have to. I can't hit return. I have to hit. It wants to try to auto correct that because it thinks uh, that I might have said something else. Photo, image, photo, cancel. All right. So we hit the edit. We did the edit. Enter, done. And we have to hit done. From Jessica, button, photo, Chica, October 13th. And did you hear that? Now it says Chica. It's pronouncing it wrong. And lying on a carpeted surface. It's pronouncing it Chica, but you see it said it right there. So anytime when I come across this photo, back button, go back. Date range, live photo, October 6th, live photo, live photo, October 7th, photo, October 10th. More content available and illustration of a person wearing headphones. Talk photo, October 22nd, photo, Chica, October 13th. See that? Same. So now once you put that description in there, it reads that to you automatically. And uh, it's, it's that simple. One other thing I want to show you for today, and that's just how easy it is to make a slideshow. Now you have memories, which are like automatic slideshows that are put to Apple Music tracks. That's in the For You tab. And they're a lot of fun because it'll pop up different memories. The more photos you have, the better it is. And it, it pops up relevant things like, you know, uh, if, it's, if it's somebody's birthday, it'll pop up photos of that person through the years and, you know, things of that nature. But I also can make my own slideshow very easily. And so... I'm not going to be too concerned about what the photos are in the slideshow right now because I just want to show you how easy it is to make one. We're assuming you would look through your photos as I just did and figure them out, label them, you know, whatever. So I'm just going to go to select. More button. Select button. Dimmed. Cancel button. And we are going to. Photo. Vertical scroll. Photo. November 1st. More selected. Photo. I'm just October selecting. 30th. Some photos. More content available. And illustration of a cartoon character with a pink background. Tough selected. All right, let's photo. select October twenty second. The photo. dog. October twenty photo. Chica. October selected photo. And yeah, let's photo. select this October one. 10th. 
More content available uh, and illustration of a person wearing headphones. Toka Hair Salon com. I said I wasn't going to be worried about what they were, didn't I? Let's select, select this photo. one. I just want to select <laughs> a few. Selected. Live photo. October 6th. Shared. Saved. A dog lying on a bed with stuffed animals. G. More content um, available. Live photos are really cool because they have a little bit of audio in them too and, and motion. All right. So I've selected, I don't know, six or seven photos here. So we have something to work with. And now at toolbar delete six photos selected share button at the bottom i'm going to hit share share we're going to choose six photos selected slideshow lightroom button cut more copy add to add duplicate hide slideshow button and i think it's actually going to start playing automatically but i can double tap to bring up the controls and pause it so i can make changes to it Live photo image. Yeah. Photo image. Black text on a white background. The w- lit photo image. Black text on a white background. Ocon. Photo photo. Now if I want to, I can live photo. It double live tap. Photo 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 image photo photo image photo air photo air airplay it. Now, I want to pause it. options. Pause. Okay. Pause. There we go. Because I want to show you the options. So we can airplay this to an Apple TV or a smart television uh, that supports airplay. Um, we can go to the options options button and we can, for example, theme, music magazine, the theme magazine button. So I can pick a different theme, which would automatically change the music too. Or I can Origami. just manually change the music, which would like, let me pick other soundtracks or even tracks from my Apple music library. Dissolve. Let's do selected push Ken Burns. Okay. Toolbar. Ken oh, let's Burns. do Ken Burns theme. and music. Ken Burns. It button. did apparently change the music. So repeat, switch button off, slideshow speed 50%. Make it a little slower. 40%. All right. Toolbar. Play. The play. And now toolbar. we should be able play. to hit button. play. Photo image. Okay. Now, that was how easy it is to create a slideshow yourself. And I'm going to get out of that. And then I'm going to deselect these photos because I still have six photos selected. So I, I, at least I think I do. Maybe I don't. Let me see. Yeah, they're still selected. We're going to hit cancel. And then I'll go into a memory for you. 4,000 months. Because I told you that they're cool. Photos. Edit. Uh, selected. Edit. For you. Button. We go to for you. We go. Memories. Heading. To memories. And I'll just pick one. See all. Button. Over the years. Exploring Hershey. Live photo. All right. Action. Different trips to Hershey Park. That'll be fun. And it's going to pick a song from my Apple Music Library. And I can I can see each of these photos. What the description is as they're playing. I just tap on them. Let's start the memory. Blue sky. Blue sky. It said carousel child. Now it said adult and carousel. That, that, that happens to be a pretty loud music track, but. Child costume sunglasses. So these photos are changing automatically, and that, that's it. It was a pretty short memory. We can close it. That's, that's how easy it is. So th- there's, I mean, we've just scratched the surface. We haven't even, you know, and, and we're about out of time for today. That's going to do it for today. And uh, God bless you, everybody. And we will, uh, we will see you back here. Let's see, today's Wednesday. We'll see you back on Monday. And... Uh, Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.